In the previous lectures, we learned how to create a signal, how to use a signal in a view, and also how to update a signal value. Now, to conclude this section, there are two other important features which already exists in Angular, and I wanted to cover them as well. And the first feature which I want to talk about is the computed function. And to use computed function, first we need to import it from Angular slash go. Okay. Now here, let me go ahead and let me create a new property. I'll call it double counter. And to this, I'm going to assign computed function. Now, what do we use this computed function for? We use computed function to compute a value from a signal. For example, first of all, to this computed function, we need to pass a callback function. And inside this callback function, we can write a logic to compute some value from a signal. So here, what I want is, I want to compute a new value from this counter signal. So first of all, I will access that counter signal. For that, I can say this dot counter. And since it is a signal, we need to call it like this. And to that, I want to multiply two. And in this way, here, we are computing a value from this signal. And this computed function, it is going to return a signal which will be assigned to this double counter property. And that signal is going to store this computed value. So remember that this double counter property, it is going to be updated every time the value of this counter property changes. Let's say the current counter value is two. In that case, this double counter value will be four. And now let's say the value of this counter has changed to three. So as soon as the value of this counter signal will change, the value for this double counter will be re-evaluated. So its value will be re-evaluated based on the new value of this counter signal. And that value will be assigned to this double counter. Now let's go ahead and let's use this double counter signal in this view template. So here, instead of displaying the value of counter signal, now we are going to display the value of double counter. And since it is storing a signal, we need to call it. Okay, so again, remember that every time the value of this counter signal will change based on that change, the value of this double counter will also get updated. And this is the use of this computed function. So if you save the changes, if you go back to the web page, so the current value is zero. When I click on this plus button, the current value will be two because the counter value is one. So to that two will be multiplied. So the double counter value will be two. If I click on this plus button again, the counter value is two. So the double counter value will be four. If I click on this minus button, the new counter value is one. So the double counter value is again two. And here, when we are using this double counter signal, Angular will also memorize that double counter is being used here. And it will understand that double counter uses counter signal as an input. And that's why, Angular will recompute the value of double counter whenever the counter signal value changes and it will update the UI whenever the double counter value changes. So Angular watches for all these changes and therefore the computed function gives us a smart and easy way of computing values that depends on other signals. Another signal function which I want to cover here is the effect function. And again, in order to use the effect function, we first need to import it from angular slash go. Now we use effect function whenever we want to execute some code when the value of a signal changes. So for example, let's say you want to execute some code whenever the value of this counter signal changes, or you want to execute some code whenever the value of this message signal changes. So you can do that by using effect function. Now we don't use effect function to change the value of a signal. Instead, we use effect function to execute some extra logic whenever the value of a signal changes. Let's try to understand that with an example. So in order to use effect function, basically we can use effect function anywhere. We can also use it in a constructor or in ng on init lifecycle hook. So here I will simply create a constructor and there I will use the effect function. Okay. So in here, I'm going to call the effect function. And to this effect function, we need to pass a callback function. And inside this callback function, 
I am simply going to write a console.log statement and there I will simply say new counter value is and then I'll use the counter signal. So here I'll say this dot counter. So inside this effect function, we are using this counter signal. So whenever the value of this counter signal will change, this callback function which we are passing to this effect function that will be called and it is going to log this message in the console. Let's actually see that. Let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And in here, let me first open developer console. Let me clear everything. And now when I click on this plus button, you will notice that that message new counter value is one has been logged. If I click on this plus button again, again, you will see the message new counter value is two that has been logged. If I click on this minus button, the counter value has again changed and you will see this message new counter value is one. So every time the value of this counter signal will change this callback function, which we are passing to this effect function that will be called. Now, what will happen if I don't specify any signal inside this effect function? So, for example, if I remove this signal from here, in that case, we are not using any signal inside this effect function. Then when this callback function will be called on which signal change, this callback function should be called. Well, since we are not using any signal inside this callback function, which we are passing to this effect function. Now, this callback function will never get called. So if I save the changes, if I go back to the web page and now when I click on this plus button, you will see that that message is not being logged. That's because now this effect function does not know on which signal change it should be calling this callback function. But if I go ahead and if I specify that counter signal back in that case, now this callback function will be called every time the value of this counter signal changes here instead of counter signal if i use message signal in that case this callback function will be called every time the value of this message signal changes okay but let me make it as counter signal so basically the effect function allows you to define a code that depends on a signal and Angular will automatically re-execute the callback function that we are passing to the effect whenever any signal being used inside that function changes. So we use computed function to compute a value from a signal value. And we use effect function whenever we want to execute some code when the value of a signal changes. And with that, this is all about signals. Now there are more features to be added to signal in the future and I will cover those features when it is available. And if you want to see what are the new features that might get added to signals, let's go to browser and there let's search for Angular Signal RFCs. And here you will see a GitHub link. Let's just open that. And here you can see the RFCs for Angular Signals. So RFCs basically stands for Request for Comments Document. And you can read this document to learn more about signals and their development process. And if we scroll down here, you will see that here we have several RFCs and one of the RFCs is for signal based components. If I open this RFC, this is a new feature which will get added to signals, but this feature is not available in Angular 16 version. This might get added in the future versions of Angular and this feature will basically allow us to create signal based components and to create signal based components, all we will have to do is here you can see this syntax. So in the component decorator, we will have to specify a signal property and we will have to set it to true. In that way, we will create a signal based component. So this syntax, it does not work yet, but it is likely to be added in the future. And as I mentioned earlier, the signal feature is still in development and it's not complete yet. There is a bit more to be added. And this is all about signals for now. As mentioned, this feature is in developer preview, so there is not much to cover right now. And this signal feature is not yet final and stable. I'll update this section when we will have more features to cover related to signals. But in the future, signals might give us a nice alternate way of handling change detections. So as we learned before, signal provides us more advantage over old change detection mechanism in terms of performance and it gives developers more control over when change should be detected. 
this is all from this section if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day